Hi LEGO fans, after the phenomenal success of Saturn V and to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, we have another cool NASA themed set from LEGO. On July 20th 1969, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first men to walk on the moon. And they got to the moon using something that looks like this. So today, I'm going to be unboxing, speed building and reviewing set number 10266, NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander from LEGO Creator Expert. This is a 1087 piece set featuring two minifigures. I don't believe these are specifically named as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, but as only two people landed on the moon in the Apollo 11 mission, you do the math. This set recreates both the descent and the ascent stages and the lunar surface. As the 1087 piece part count suggests, this is a pretty compact build. The completed model is just under 8 inches wide and 8 inches tall. I expect this will make a really nice companion set to the Saturn V and should appeal to LEGO fans and space fans alike. Further appealing to nostalgia junkies, we have the words of Neil Armstrong as he took his first steps on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And if English isn't your first language, we have translations into French and Spanish. C'est un petit pas pour l'homme et un bon de géant pour l'humanité. Es un pequeño paso para el hombre, pero un gran salto para la humanidad. And that, folks, is why I don't leave the country very often. Over on the back of the box we get a closer look at all of the features of this fantastic display model. The set is modular so you can remove the ascent stage from the descent stage, and you can take a look inside the ascent stage to get a feel for the conditions that Neil and Buzz had to endure. We also have a display base which recreates the surface of the moon and has an Apollo 11 lunar lander name badge. It kind of reminds me of the LEGO architecture sets. Unlike LEGO architecture, it does look like we're going to have to apply some stickers. We also have a stickered recreation of the plaque that Neil and Buzz left on the moon declaring that they came in peace for all mankind. It looks like the ascent stage comes with quite a bit of interior detail. We have a fold down flap revealing the video camera that captured the historic event. And I'm not entirely sure what this is, maybe it contains scientific equipment. This looks like a really cool build and with the 16 plus recommended age range it should be quite a challenge. So let's open up the box and see what we've got inside. Here's everything that came inside the box. We have 8 bags of LEGO numbered for stages 1 through 4. A bunch of different 16 stud plates. A 146 page instruction booklet which contains a bunch of details about the Apollo 11 mission. It even gives you a guided tour around all of the different components of the lunar lander. And a few words from the LEGO designer. In fact there's a lot of truly fascinating information here. And finally we have a super shiny sticker sheet. I'm going to go ahead and build the NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander and today this is going to be a 90 second speed build. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And here is the completed NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. 
I was fearful with the 1087 piece part count that this might not be worthy of the LEGO Creator Expert badge. But with a build time of an hour and 52 minutes for a relatively small model, I think they probably got it right. There was certainly a good amount of complexity and it was a really enjoyable build. As a display model this looks really really cool. I really like the fact that this comes on its own base plate and pretty much being 8 inches square it's not going to take up too much display space. We have a lot of detail to cover here so without further ado let's take a few steps on the moon. Although this does look very cool on the base plate you can simply remove it. This recreates our intrepid explorers taking their first steps on the lunar surface. There's an iconic image from NASA showing an astronaut's footprint frozen in the moon dust. And this is beautifully recreated in minifigure scale on the lunar lander's base plate. I love the exposed studs which allow you to recreate those first steps with the minifigures. We also have a clearly defined crater. It's super sharp detail and really brings this set to a new level. We also have circular imprints in each corner to show where the feet of the lander made contact with the moon. Beyond being decorative, these do help to align the feet and give the model some more structural stability. Even though the legs look very thin and not very strong, they actually do a good job of holding up the weight of the lander. Having flown 238,900 miles to beat the Russians to the moon, there's no better way to declare American superiority than by planting a flag. The real one was made out of lightweight materials and was rigid because there's no wind to blow it around. This version was built out of LEGO and was stickered by hand. Presumably LEGO didn't want to pay to use the image rights of Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong so we'll come back to the generic astronauts a little bit later. Even without the base plate the lunar lander does manage to stand on its own four feet. But it does become really tricky to get these satellite dishes on the end of the feet to stand up correctly. Like many other elements in this set these are made up of this really nice airbrushed gold colour. I really can't recall another LEGO set that has so many of these gold pieces. It looks awesome. As the legs are quite thin we do have some cross bracing which does a great job of holding everything together. It also really closely matches the original design. Adjusting for inflation NASA spent about 22 billion US dollars designing and building all of the Apollo lunar modules. We have a lower set of braces which connect the bottom part of the leg to the bottom part of the lunar module and more stabilizers that connect to the top of the leg to keep everything rigid. Speaking of the legs, check out those fancy silver elements. These come in the same kind of sprayed on effect that we see with the gold. If you enjoy applying stickers, honestly I don't, you're going to really love this set. There are three stickers on this panel, another three on this panel including the American flag and hidden away underneath the steps is another sticker. Although you can't make out the words on the sticker this was an actual plaque attached to the real lunar module. It's still up there to this day. Here men from the planet earth first set foot upon the moon July 1969 AD. We came in peace for all mankind. The plaque is also signed by Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, Buzz Aldrin and disgraced ex-president of the USA Richard Nixon. The lunar lander also contains some more secrets. Over on the right hand side we have an opening panel. This reveals a peculiar oddity but I was able to figure out what this is. I believe this is a reflective panel which was left behind on the moon with the intention of firing lasers off it. Scientists on earth can focus a high powered laser on this reflective panel and calculate the distance between the earth and the moon. It's simple but very very effective. On the other side of the lander we have another opening panel revealing a video camera. This is likely to be one of the RCA command module TV cameras which were developed for the Apollo mission. These recorded in black and white and that's why you don't see Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in colour. It's a very simple model made up of four Lego elements with a printed 1x2. Not relevant to this model but Apollo 12 was the first mission to use a colour camera. They used a Westinghouse lunar colour camera which was developed for the mission. Unfortunately for astronaut Alan Bean, 42 minutes into telecasting the first EVA from Apollo 12 he pointed the camera at the sun. The extreme brightness of the sun burned out the video pickup tube rendering the camera useless. Taking a look at the underside of the lunar module you can see the descent engine. This enabled the astronauts to make controlled burns and avoid slamming into the moon. Also on the Eagle we have the egress platform complete with a ladder. This leads up to the egress hatch on the ascent module which has a pair of opening doors. When it's time to go home the crew climb inside the ascent stage and Bob's your uncle. For LEGO practicality purposes there are a couple of bars here to which the ascent module clips. 
Peering inside the base of the lunar module, you can see some tanks. The red tanks will have contained aerosine 50 fuel, and the white tanks would have contained nitrogen tetroxide oxidizer. One final thing to note, all of those gold elements are not just there to make it look pretty. This actually represents the thermal shield which protected all of the scientific equipment, and all of that super unstable fuel from catching fire. Getting to the moon is all very well, but getting away is another technical challenge. To solve that challenge, we have the ascent module. I'm taking a bit of a guess here, but I'm guessing these brackets lock the ascent module to the descent module. That being the case, there would be some kind of mechanism to make these fly back when the ascent module launches. Either that would be mechanical, or maybe there was some kind of pyrotechnic charge. You guys probably know more than I do about the Apollo missions, so feel free to contribute in the comments. It's a well-known fact that the moon is a terrible place to have a party. There's just no atmosphere. There's also very little gravity, which is a great thing if you're attempting to launch a spacecraft from the surface. This meant the ascent module could have a tiny little engine. Using the same aerosine 50 fuel and oxidizer, this tiny little engine managed to get the ascent module off the surface of the moon. The ascent engine was not the only means of propulsion, and we also have these four RCS thruster assemblies. I'm guessing these would be used for direction, and more so on the descent than on the ascent. The ascent module also contained radio communications, including an S-band antenna, and a rendezvous radar antenna, presumably for guiding the ascent module to the orbiter. On the top is a docking hatch for the astronauts to get in and out. And on the side here we have yet another antenna. This one uses VHF or very high frequency radio. In fact, there's another one of those on the bottom of the module as well. On the front we do have the opening doors, but these don't really give us much scope to take a look around inside. Instead, we can just simulate some explosive decompression. On the inside of the egress door, we have a couple of levers. We do, of course, have the opening doors. And then we have one of these stickered computer control panels. There's also a window on either side to allow the astronauts to peer out. More computer wizardry lies within the module, but it's a little bit difficult to see. Thankfully, the rear panel can also be removed. There are some more stickered panels representing the control systems inside the ascent module. We also have much more computing power on the walls inside the module. These systems would also include the Apollo Guidance Computer, developed by a team at MIT. That team was led by Margaret Hamilton, who you might recognise from the Women at NASA LEGO Ideas set. Here's Margaret posing with a large stack of books which contain printouts of the source code of the Apollo Guidance Computer. When it comes to passenger comfort, it's standing room only in the LEGO Lunar module. We do have some studs on which to stand the minifigures, but there's nowhere to sit. For those of you with a keen memory, you'll know this is not the first time we've seen the Eagle in LEGO form. We also got this teeny tiny version with the Saturn V rocket. LEGO and the space theme have always gone really well together. Certainly I was crazy about space LEGO back in the 1980s, and the Saturn V rocket definitely helped to reinvigorate LEGO interest among adult fans. So it wasn't really very surprising to learn that LEGO were going to bring out the Lunar Lander. It appeals to people like me who love LEGO, and also to people like me who appreciate the history of space. If you're a fan of the Lunar Module and the Saturn V, you're going to love the LEGO Ideas International Space Station. This has just been approved by the LEGO Ideas panel, and once LEGO's designers finish tweaking it, we should see this in the stores in a few months. No review of the NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander would be complete without taking a look at the astronauts. Seemingly from the outside, these guys are identical. But when you remove the helmets, you're going to notice a slight difference. Although not explicitly named, this is presumably Neil Armstrong. You'll notice he's got ginger-coloured eyebrows. By process of elimination, this must be Edwin E. Aldrin Jr, aka Buzz. I wonder where the idea for Buzz Lightyear came from. The uniform is NASA themed, and you can see the NASA logo on the torso piece. We also have a number of details for the umbilicals for the spacesuit. The detail on the back of the torso is pretty minimal, with just a few creases. And those legs are standard white minifigure legs. The helmet and the air tanks are combined into one convenient unit. This simply slips over the shoulders of the minifigure, and then there's a gold visor in this sprayed gold colour which can be removed. It looks kind of odd like this, so I'm going to put that back on. I don't think it's really designed to be removed. We do have a couple of mounting points on the side here, so we can add, I don't know, wings or hoses or whatever we want to do to 
power our imagination. And then we have the air tanks on the back there. It's a really simple solution here. Don't quite have that on properly. Uh, there we go. And that is a really cool piece of headgear. It's not new, we've seen it before in space characters, but it really suits this Apollo 11 set. The minifigs definitely aren't the most detailed minifigs in the world, but they do fit the set really well. I would have liked to have seen these identified as Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, but I'm sure we can figure out who these are actually meant to be. So there we have it, the Eagle has landed, and that was set number 10266, the NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander. Houston, I definitely don't have a problem with this set. This is super cool and it's going to make an awesome display piece. With so many big Lego sets out there that are really hard to display, it's really nice to get one like this which has an 8x8 footprint. Not only is this a very good looking set, the construction standards are very high, it's got a bunch of those really cool gold elements, and I love the attention to detail both inside and outside the model. Not only do we have a really cool lunar lander, we also have some really interesting information inside the instruction booklet. So if you're a fan of really cool Lego sets, or you're into space and looking to rekindle your love of Lego, the NASA Apollo 11 Lunar Lander won't disappoint. Although the build is relatively compact, the scale of the model makes it very satisfying. I really enjoyed building and showing you around the Lunar Lander, and I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, a thumbs up is all the encouragement I need. And feel free to subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. I make a lot of videos just like this, so if you're new to the channel, do check out some of my other content. So after one small step for man, one giant leap for minifigures, thanks a million for checking out today's review, stay safe, and we'll see you on the next build video.